All right, so finishing up this part, I got all the standoffs in place, so I, I screwed them down. Uh, as you can see, I'm working from the board. I'm able to still lift it, and I connected all the front first, so I can lift it. I can work on it safely. Uh, this wire, this is the silver um, aerospace grade wire, is very stiff. So when I get to these runs in the front and I try pushing forward, there's a lot of resistance coming pushing back at me. Um, but I love how this looks with the blue and the red, and the black. I don't know. Visually, it's it's appealing to me. So I need to basically, I'm, I'm, it's going to come together really quickly here. As long as I get my family time um, and amp time balanced, I should maybe even have this working this weekend. Uh, I am going to build a current limiter because I just, I want to make sure that, you know, I didn't make any mistakes. This was the probably the biggest risk build uh in my opinion, just from my research and everything. Biggest risk meaning that there wasn't a lot of proven sort of layout circulated. I had to do a lot of my own research and and based on my education and pre prior background on other amps, you know, apply that towards this. So I, I think, I, th I know I'm ready. It's, it's just I want to also make sure I'm taking every precaution to make it safe and for those who are, are following along you know, making it safe for you as well. I updated the GitHub to include wiring for the FET. So please go ahead and check out the wiring for the FET input. Um, I'm using the Switchcraft L114BX on that. I think I mentioned the other video, but I did update the drawing uh, and hopefully that is all good. So we're cooking. Not literally, I, I need to stop using that word, that phrase. All right, so the amp is coming together. Um, I'm really excited <laughs> right now. I'm I'm super excited throughout the entire project. Uh, but I have the step filters in place. I get a lot of compliments on the step filters here. So thank you all um, that commented. Pretty cool. So I put the board down first. I think if you remember in the first video, just so I, I don't have any clearance to put that um, screw in there. So I put down the board first. This was kind of hanging out there, uh, and then I, I flapped it down. So the way I did this was I stood it on end up here, and then I did that. So the next thing I'm doing is the phase and driver board. Uh, here that is. The way I did that was similar too. So I flipped it like this, and then I just worked on it. Some of the runs are a lot longer than they really need to be. Not a lot longer, but a little bit longer than they need to be. And that's all right, because if I ever need to do some troubleshooting um, and to take this apart. I mean, it's going to be a pain to get into here and undo all the, und undo all that. But regardless, um, I it's going to be a lot easier for me to do it that way. So, so far the, the amp is coming together. Uh, you can kind of see what it's going, what I'm going for here. Nice and clean lines. Um, if I only I drilled straight, that would be flush with this. But Little details, little details, little things. Oh, and based on suggestions uh, from my comments, um, thank you, by the way, because I put some heat shrink on here. I'm going to go to the hardware store after my daughter's swim lessons and get some shorter screws. I can actually shorten this up by a, a quarter inch. So that's exciting. I'm going to do that. i got the FET and the reverb board, and we, well, not too close because I need to build the current limiter and that's all right it's gonna be worth it i should really take my time uh on this to do it right what we're gonna end up here is a very minimal wiring visible wiring uh in the scheme of all of this so yeah we're getting there we're getting there i put the screws on or i put the knobs on everything's nice and solid real tight each knob sort of has like a wobble to it this one's not too bad all right uh yeah we're getting there one thing i am going to add to the um to the uh layout sorry 
<laughs> total brain cramp there, is this capacitor. Uh, this more or less, you ever turn off an amp? I know this definitely happens with my deluxe reverb reissue, and it kind of goes crunches a little bit. Uh, this cap will prevent that. On the Cheerio Tone, is the first time I saw that cap. I wondered what it was. I added it to my, uh, it's not on the John Mayer amp, or at least the Wonderland layout on the standby switch up here. Uh, but I added it because I heard the same crunching that I did with my Deluxe Reverb. So I'm like, that's interesting. So I added the 0 0.047 microfarad capacitor, and sure enough, it went away. So I'm going to do the same thing on here just because I like that. Um, I don't think it makes a big difference, uh, you know, anywhere else in the circuit, but that will at least hold that, um, make that noise go away when you power things down. So you need pretty high voltage. This is 630. It's just on the brink of, of being acceptable. All right. All right. I'm back to explain one more thing. Uh, this is the, it, it's a Piher um, resistor. It's a two watt new old stock. This carbon composition, just like the, uh, the Dumble used on Seal String Singer number four, but this is Seal String Singer number two's value, which is 2.7K. Um, I have in my bomb, a uh, well, I originally started off with a Dale Precision resistor, which I thought would be a, a pretty good suggestion. Um, but one of my contacts had access to this resistor. And if you want, and I know I mentioned it in my other video as far as personality and the global negative feedback, you can substitute this out with a Allen and Bradley new old stock on eBay. Uh, two watt carbon composition resistors. The wattage, I'm going to guess, is just to keep the noise down. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but this is more or less what, what Dumble used. Uh, some say it's part of the magic. I was going to do a comparison with the Dale Precision because the John Mayer amp uses a metal film resistor, which is lowest noise in theory. So, and I was going to compare that against this, but I decided that all the rework effort, just not worth it. Even though the eyelets are pretty easy for us to rework because I just pull it out and then put it in a new resistor. These leads are really beefy and fitting that into the hole after it's been soldered tight is probably uh, not going to be an easy task. So I just went for it. I'm going to, I know I'm going to be happy with this. And there's other parts of the circuit that are probably way more critical. Maybe. Controversy right there. Does the inductor make a difference? I don't know. We can jump it later. We'll have fun. All right, I just shot a video of the same, of this topic. And I'm going to reshoot that video now because I felt like I was rambling on and on and on. So I have the last board just about to do. Uh, this is the reverb board. I'm going to do the same approach, and I'm going to lay it up on end, and then wire it up, place it down, screw it in, be all set. Uh, as you can see, I put in the FET board. I'm not quite thrilled on how much of a pain it was. I didn't wire it up yet, but uh, you can see things are kind of tight in here, and this is at a slope. It's not. It's kind of driving me a little crazy. Uh, but once I close it all up, you won't even know. But what what happened was, and please be careful if you're going to start this, see how close it's not. It's right out of the way. But you can see how close this uh, screw head is if you were to put the chassis screw right in here. I mean, you could drill out onto this one and then be completely safe, but um, I'm going to go straight as best as I can. It was really tight, so that's the next step. I got it. You can see that the reverb board, I, I had to chisel off uh, a corner. I need to clean this up. Some dust on it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of next. Just be careful. Be, be conscious of, of what you're doing here. Take this also, uh, this 100 picofarad. It, it straddles that resistor. Try to put it on top of the resistor um, and get it up and out of the way. Because it's going to be tight. These standoffs are a quarter inch, by the way. 
I picked those up from Hoffman. Uh, they're going to be probably needed. The same standoffs over here that I used on there. So also per your suggestion uh, comments out there on YouTube, um, I know I mentioned about the heat shrink, but I also got a shorter screw. I didn't cut it. I just went and for the 14 cents per, went out and bought new screws. I have a Ace Hardware literally three minutes down the road. But I understand if that's not easy for you to do. All right, let's keep going. We are getting very close to the end here, folks. Um, so here's E6000. It's a rubber cement industrial strength adhesive, it says. Um, I've used this a lot in the past on clothing, but never on an amp. Um, based yeah. on comments, I believe, on the, the amp garage or on my uh, YouTube page, I, I had a suggestion to use rubber cement to hold these down instead of um, hot glue. So I gave it a try, and I think it's working out okay. There, I don't see any risk. I read through all the you know do's and don'ts and nothing about electrical circuit ox oxidation. I'm going to let this sit for a couple hours. Um, it's going to dry clear real nice, but that's going to take, that's going to basically be my strain relief on the coax cable since I have coming through the top. Um, the center conductor is, I believe, 24 gauge, so it's really thin. I've had one break on me before, and the length was just right before it broke, and then after it was unusable. So it was really a bummer. Not on this amp, it was on another amp. So wrapping things up, I'm going to do a final inspection, and then it's running the wires through the holes, um, the eyelets, to attach to the uh, nine pins. Then it's construction of the current limiter, and then we're going to fire it up for the first time without tubes, just to make sure everything's okay. No, nothing bad because yeah, I don't want the the tubes are are expensive. Transformers are expensive. I want to make sure that I'm not going to blow anything up, and I'm safe. And if you're following along, you're doing. Look, I'm sort of teaching the best practices. But as always, you are on, you know, sort of your own when it comes to double checking your work. I can't do that. And I'm not responsible for that stuff. I don't know why people put that disclaimer in all their videos, but it feels right. I'm just going to cover my bases and do it that way. Um, one other tip is that when you're working in here, feel free to grab your um, vacuum cleaner and just vacuum it out because I found that during the final stages of mine, I thought everything was nice and clean, and then all of a sudden, you know, I, I would take the vacuum around and I would see something move. And it was either, you know, a clip lead or a solder ball or whatever. Um, and that's not good to have in there. So another final thing I'm gonna do is tip the amp upside down, shake it a little bit, and make sure all this stuff falls out. Uh, that should fall out. <laughs> All right, I'm really proud of how the uh, layout turned out. Even all the little hiccups considered, uh, you know, I'm not exactly crazy proud of how the FET turned out. I probably could have moved it back a little further. Uh, you can see I had enough room for sure, uh, especially, you know, in the layout with a quarter inch. I could have notched that out entirely and moved this whole thing back to an easier position. So if you haven't started yet, that's what I recommend is notching that out. If you use a quarter inch uh, standoffs like this, you, you're going to be totally fine. Sort of the same approach in the front here. Just notch it out. Just notch this out. This moves back. Then you get nice even height the whole way. It's nice and even. So uh, my loss is your gain, as they say. All right, we are in the final stretch, ladies and gentlemen. I started wiring up the eyelets here. Uh, you can see in the hole. This was a lot easier than I, I was anticipating. Uh, these are done. These are a little bit harder. So what I'm doing is I'm stripping back. Ooh, where is it in the camera? I'm stripping back solid core wire that I got from Hoffman's. This is 20 gauge. And I feed it. I strip it all the way back. Ooh, where's my camera? And then I feed it in the hole. And then I use my dentist tool. See that little hook? I go in there, grab it. Whoa, move back for improved focus. 
and then I pull it forward. Okay, and then that goes uh, like in the hole just slightly, and then I'll solder it in place. I'll bend the top lead. Now, here's a tip is work from, so right now I'm facing the amp like this way. I'm working away from me first and then coming back. And the reason for that is with the soldering iron, it's a lot simpler to go from the front to the back, uh, hitting these connections and making sure everything is good and good. All right, so uh, that's sort of my technique. Here is my trimmer pot. So if you are comparing Steel String Singer number two, uh, the Japanese schematic with the with my layout, you're going to notice that this is the basically the only thing that's different. And that's not really different if you take this trim pot and, well, I'm going to use this tool, and you basically close it so it's, oh, actually it's the other way. Um, close the connection so it makes a, a dead short. And what this trim pot is, is it's found on later steel string singers. Um, definitely number four uh, and, and on, I believe, from, from my research. But this trim pot... Uh, reduces the dry signal going to the filter section. So you're basically dropping the dry signal. It's going to increase the dry wet ratio or, or decrease it or increase it. I don't know. You're going to have more uh, reverb coming through as a byproduct of this, but this is going to help you achieve somewhat acceptable house volumes. Uh, I'm not going to say bedroom volumes, but it's house volumes. Um, it's just going to make your amp, uh, res the response just a touch softer. Uh, I did this on my steel string singer number four, uh, just because the, the original had it. Sterling signature two rocks has it as well. Um, and it, it, it just makes it, I don't know, it's less gainy and that's all right. If you're doing bedroom playing or, but here's the thing, you just close that, you just change the trim pot setting to a dead short and then you have the stock steel string singer setting so it's not it's not bad what something to note here is i took the the f middle leg and i jumped it to one side in this case i jumped it to this side and so that means that this is just a variable resistor overall and the way that i'm adjusting it is that it's just convenient uh you're able to take a flathead screwdriver and adjust it but this tool actually works out really well for adjusting go like that and guess what it's in a new position. All right, so this is a three-minute video of me rambling on. Um, I'm going to wire these up, and then it's on to the current limiter before I plug this bad boy in to check for any sort of shorts, and then I'm going to trim back these leads to make it all nice and neat. So that's my progress for today. Getting close.